Hi friends, it's Sam from DIY Huntress. If there's one thing that I think we can all agree on in 2020 is that you can never have enough work from home spaces. But if you're like me and you're short, yes, I'm actually short, but also short on space, <laughs> then you'll know that it's super hard to find a dedicated spot sometimes to fit a full blown desk and a work from home setup. And although I swore off of building anything with the word Murphy in it after the Murphy bed this summer, today I'm super excited to show you how I built a fold down wall desk or a Murphy desk that looks like a piece of artwork when it's closed and functions as a desk when it is open. I am super stoked about this build, so let's get started. I partnered up with Walmart to help make this project come to life. If there are two things I always say that I'm really short on on this channel, it is time and it is also space. So I'm really excited to show you how I made this space saving fold down wall desk in just a few days of work. And as always friends, you can find the full list of products and materials that I use for this project as well as a step-by-step -step tutorial for it written out on my website as well and that link is below this video in the video description. Now to get started on this project, I cut some one by six pine boards down into two side pieces and a top and a bottom piece to create a simple box for the frame of the desk. When it came time for joinery, I really wanted my joinery to be hidden, so I decided to use some dowels in order to join these pieces together. This is totally optional. Joinery can be done in so many different ways. You can use pocket holes, you can just use screws straight through the boards. I would suggest using whatever works for you in your workshop, and like I mentioned earlier, for me, dowels worked, so I'll walk you through how I did that. To get started, I marked where I wanted my dowels to go and I made sure that they lined up with the sideboards and the top and bottom boards just because when everything is put together, I wanted everything to be aligned beautifully. I then moved ahead with a doweling jig that I have in my workshop and drilled some holes into these boards using this jig. I basically then repeated this process in every board that I was going to add dowels into and as you can see some of the boards required the holes to be drilled into the face of the board and others required them to be drilled into the ends of the board. This will depend on where the dowels go and how you are joining everything together but just in case you are looking for some placement as to how I did this you can definitely check out the printable plans for this build. But once all of my openings were drilled for my dowels, I then added the dowels into place, tapped them in firmly, added a whole bunch of wood glue, and then it was time to attach the pieces together. Now, because the dowel joinery was a pretty tight fit, it definitely helped to work on this thing on the floor. And so I assembled everything down on the floor and then tapped everything into place lightly using my mallet. At this point, it was then time to add some wood clamps and just tighten everything down and then allow this box to dry for a couple of hours. Now, if you're looking for a quicker way to kind of move on to the next step in this process, I would definitely suggest using maybe pocket hole joinery or again, using those screws and the wood glue method. This definitely took a little while to dry, but as it dried, I kind of went on to some other parts of the project and worked on those next. Specifically, I started cutting the pieces for the shelf that I wanted to add as well as the divider because I did want to add a small little area with some pegboard so that I could hang some office supplies. And I actually ended up attaching that divider piece using pocket holes and then attached the shelf piece using nails and glue, which you'll see in a little bit. So two quick things here. I actually ended up using pocket holes for this divider piece because I knew that the pocket holes would be hidden by the pegboard that I'm adding later. But I also made sure to only drill the pocket holes in spaces where they would be hidden. And then I used wood glue to secure the rest of this piece. I just have this personal vendetta with pocket holes where I don't love them to be exposed in my build, so I always try to find creative ways to hide them when I'm building with them. But again, that's just me. If you don't mind the exposed pocket holes, then totally use pocket hole joinery for this entire build. It would make life so much easier. But okay, tangent about pocket holes over. As you can see, the next step here was to add the shelf piece, and I did this using wood glue and brad nails, and the reason I did that, again, is basically to just hide the joinery. I'm also not going to be putting anything crazy heavy on this shelf, so brad nails and wood glue should totally be enough to support the shelf. Now at this point, the bulk of the frame of the desk was built and I decided that I really wanted to add some pegboard to that side with the divider. And I wanted to add pegboard so I could hang a couple of different things like clipboards or office supplies. And in order to do that, I needed to build out a small frame so that the pegboard could float enough for me to stick pegs on it. 
And right now I'm kind of on a kick where I'm using what I have in my shop. So instead of purchasing one by twos for this, I just cut my own one by twos out of some leftover one by sixes on my table saw. But you can just purchase one by twos for this project and not have to mill your own. And after cutting these one by twos to size, I then added them to this build using brad nails and wood glue. And I used some spacer blocks underneath to make sure that the spacing was consistent all the way around. And just a quick word of advice here and something I wish I thought of earlier in this build, when you are building the frame for the pegboard, you wanna make sure that there is enough clearance at the front of the pegboard for whatever hinges you will be using for your desk. At this point, I decided that I thought that the frame kind of looked a little basic. So I wanted to add a decorative element and I did this by adding some three quarter inch dowels to the opening on the other side of the divider using wood glue and brad nails. Okay, spoiler alert, I totally messed this up because later in the process when I install the hinges and the pistons, these things were in the way and I did have to kind of like take them off and reinstall them. So my word of advice is I would wait to put these on until later in the build after you've established how much clearance you need for your hardware. At this point though, assembly of the actual frame for the Murphy desk was done. So I removed the clamps here and then began to focus on cutting all of the plywood pieces for this build. Now in terms of the pieces that I needed to cut, I needed a front panel and I also wanted to cut a couple of supports for the back of the Murphy desk as well because I wanted to hang this thing on the wall the same way that I hung the Murphy bed, which is directly through two support pieces and into the studs. And since my table saw was already out, I also decided here to cut down the pegboard that I got from Walmart's DIY and done section of their website. And a little trick here is that if you use painter's tape when cutting down your pegboard, it will reduce the amount of chipping significantly. Other thing to mention though, friends, if you don't have a table saw in your workshop, you can make all of those cuts using a circular saw. Okay, now back to the build. So at this point, it was time to sand everything down to its final grit. And then I decided to stain the entire frame of the Murphy desk using a golden oak stain. I then painted those smaller support pieces in a black paint, which actually also doubles as a chalkboard paint. And really, I'll only be able to use the chalkboard behind the exposed shelf. But at this point, I just figured if I was painting one piece with black paint, I might as well use the same black paint for the other piece as well. I then allowed those pieces to dry as well as the desk itself to dry overnight. And then the next day I began by attaching those back support pieces to the Murphy desk. And like I mentioned earlier, the function of these two pieces is just to serve as basically the supports for the desk once I drill the desk into the wall because I'm going to be drilling the desk into the wall through these plywood pieces. At this point in the process, I directed my attention to the front door of this Murphy desk and I began by applying some edge banding to those exposed edges of the plywood to make this piece look like a solid piece of wood. And if you've never used edge banding before, this stuff is basically like woodworking magic. You iron it on with a hot iron and then you trim it and sand down all of the edges and it literally makes this piece look like it was a solid piece of wood that just came out of the store looking this beautiful. And once I was done attaching all of the edge banding, it was then time to stain the front of this Murphy desk the same color as the rest of the Murphy desk. Now, a couple of weeks ago on Instagram when I was planning this build, I had asked you guys what kind of design you wanted to see for this project. And a couple of years ago, I built a cabinet with this really awesome geometric painted design on it. And you guys voted that you wanted to see something really similar to that because I never got to share a tutorial for how I actually made that paint job happen. Now, honestly, if there's one thing I was super grateful for at this point in the process, it was Walmart's DIY and done section of their website because I was able to purchase all of the colors that I needed for this project, as well as a ton of painter's tape and as well as any of the brushes that I needed for this project. And they were able to deliver it all to my door in time to make this happen. So in terms of the design process for this project, it's pretty simple. There was none. I actually just laid out a whole bunch of painter's tape in different lines and shapes until I felt like I was happy with the initial design. And once I was there, I then pressed down all of the edges of the painter's tape using an old credit card just to help prevent the paint from seeping underneath. 
But once I was happy with that initial design, I then began to open all of the different colors that I was able to get from Walmart. And then I began to apply those colors to those openings. Now this design you see here was not the end all be all. The way that I work on geometric pieces like this is that I kind of apply a couple of colors to this first round of tape. And then I begin peeling back some of those taped layers and adding more on top of them and then adding more colors. You'll see that in a second, but basically my best advice here is to wait for the color that you put down to dry before adding any more tape and a process like this definitely takes a while with a more intricate design if you're looking to create a murphy dust that looks like a piece of artwork but not spend so much time on the actual artwork that's cool too the bills will actually take you much faster to do i just decided to spend a pretty solid amount of time making this one come to life and i'm actually happy that i did but honestly, if you're feeling like this is something that you want to try, I say go for it because the reality is like you can't really mess up. If you don't like a color or you don't like the placement of something, you just tape it off and paint it over again. I actually did that a couple of times with a few different colors and then ended up with something I was really happy with in the end. Now at this point, once the paint was dry, I was so excited to dry fit the front of this desk to the actual Murphy desk itself. Cue the happy dance because it actually looked way cooler in person than it did in my brain. Um, and then at this point, I began to add the hardware and that's where I ran into the issue with those stupid three quarter inch dowels. Now for a build like this, you will need full overlay hinges. And I had two different types that I had ordered off of Walmart's website. And I ended up liking one more than the other just for aesthetic purposes. But because of that, it then didn't fit with those dowels in place. So as you can see, I had to remove the dowels, sand everything smooth, and then reinstall them further back and further up. And if you want to hear a really funny story, which in hindsight was not that funny, but I have to laugh about it or else I would cry. I actually had to take these things off again for a third time and reinstall them later and you'll see why in a little bit. But anyway, at this point I thought that I was done moving those dowels and it was time to move on to installing the hinges. So I just did this using the directions that came with the hinges as well as all of the measurements that were recommended by the manufacturer. At this point, it was then time to install the front of the desk and I took my time here to make sure that everything was aligned perfectly. As you can see, I actually marked where the top of the panel was earlier in the process. But once it was in place, I ran my first test run and I was so excited about the way that this thing was turning out. Now, one of the last things I wanted to add to this Murphy desk were some pistons. And this is a very similar process to when I built the Murphy bed. The only difference is that they are much smaller and that I was actually able to install these by myself instead of needing another set of hands. To be honest, I was pretty nervous that these would not be strong enough to A, hold the desk closed all the way, but B, also support the weight of the desk when you have a laptop on it and you're using it as a desk and they actually work really, really well. I've actually seen similar tutorials to this one on YouTube before and they use chain instead of using the pistons. So that is an option as well if you don't want to use these pistons. But again, I definitely recommend them. Oh, okay, so this is the point where I realized that I had to take those dowels off because the desk would not close with them because the pistons were hitting them. So I actually called my brother out to run a test run to make sure that these pistons worked at all before putting those dowels back in. And they did and I was stoked and he was stoked and we just had like a little mini celebratory dance party. And once that dance party was over, I then put those three quarter inch dowels back into place and then it was time to install. When it came time to install this desk, one of the things that I did that was really helpful was I found a side table that was exactly the height I needed for hanging this thing where I wanted it to go. I then propped this up on that side table and then began to look for the studs in the wall in which I was hanging the desk. I then drilled in the screws directly through this desk into those studs and I also pre-drilled the holes just to make it look a lot neater. At this point, I was then able to add in that pegboard to that border that I made in that little nook and I attached that using some wood screws. And it was pretty much after that that I was able to call this project done. I'm actually really excited about the way that this thing turned out and I did hang it to armchair height so that you don't need a typical desk chair to sit at this desk and use it. I really wanted to integrate this wall desk as a piece of artwork first and then a desk secondary and I feel like by making it a height in which you can just pull over any chair to use it is a really great option because it does look like it kind of just fits in the room as some artwork until you're ready to move it and use it as a workspace. 
And while there are a couple of things I would probably do differently if I ever built this again, for instance, I definitely wouldn't make that workstation as deep as it is. And I'd probably also try to build something like this using different types of wood. I am really happy with the way this thing turned out and it's really not so bad for a couple of days of work. As with most of the builds on my channel, my goals are always to show you that building things can be super approachable and can be done on a very tight schedule just like mine. And whether you're short on space or short on time, this build is definitely an awesome option for anyone who's looking for a creative work from home space that can easily be integrated into any room in your home. And let's be real, it doesn't hurt that you can make this without even leaving your home at all because you can have everything delivered to your front door to make a project just like this one come to life. I hope you guys really love this project as much as I do. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more projects in the future. But until next time, friends, happy DIYing. <laughs>